Amen, indeed. And that's a good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning, Father Joe. A warm welcome to our act of worship here today. Next, and a special welcome to those who may be visiting in our midst, as well as to our online congregation worshiping with us via our Facebook page. But today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and so our collect and our readings are for the same. Now, typically, I would say it is good to be back, and it is good to be back. But I'm a little conflicted in really saying that because to be here means I'm away from somewhere else. <laughs> so, again, I'm sure you can understand, but it is always wonderful to be worshiping here at St. George's. It's always good to be back. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty oh, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no know secrets are hid. Then is the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, the Christ of the Lord. Amen.
A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning at the 27th, 26th verse. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian Enoch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his char chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to the Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its share, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The Enoch asked Philip, About whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him, the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the Enoch said, Look, here is water. What is it to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and Enoch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The Enoch saw him no more, and he went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Asotus, as he, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The will of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Reading from the Word of God, written in 1 John, chapter 4, beginning at the 7th verse. Beloved, let us love one another. 
because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love, abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are lies. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burnt. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. It takes back to what we sang months ago before in the epistle reading. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Now, if it was at school or Sunday school, you know what comes at the end. Alright, all right. so let's pray that one. Start over then. Beloved, let us love one another, love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Back to our Sunday school days. Now, there are certain moments in life that one would say are liminal moments. Moments that are at the threshold between things. Some would say that often in these moments, great clarity and insight about life can be found. Births and deaths are two such liminal moments. Quite recently, I was blessed to be present for a liminal moment in life. Amen. The birth of my daughter, Nara. And in that moment, I saw what for most of us in our own lives would be the first great example of love. And that is when we are held 
in our mother's arms at birth. Throughout the passage of time, it has always been the image of a mother that conjures up thoughts of love for us. Mother and love are almost synonymous. It is no different for us here in the church. It is through love, the love that first pours out to us at our baptism, that Holy Mother Church guides us. In her wisdom, as she set out the readings for our seasons, she knew all too well the challenges of life and even how we would stray. And so to help us, she constantly places before us reminders of God's love and who we were created to be as followers of Christ. Today, she reminds us that the love of God far surpasses any understanding that we may have. Even the deepest sense of love that a mother has for a child cannot compare to the love that God has for us. As we today wrestle with this notion of love, a word that our society seems to toss about so indiscriminately, we need to become aware of God's love as more than just a concept or, or something that we hear about in the Bible. We must take the opportunity to sit and truly think about our lives and the many ways that God's love and his grace have been poured out upon us. Think about the times when we had no idea what was going on. But in the end, our way was made. Remember the calm and the peace that we felt when, after all of our own personal efforts, we finally decided to let go and allow God to take control. It was the love and the grace of God that brought us through, and not anything of our own doing. It is this reality that tells us that we need to seek a deeper connection with God, a connection that goes beyond any set of words that we can say or things that we can do. To help us truly understand our connection to God and to get a glimpse of the awesomeness of his love, we are reminded today in the Epistle of John that, and I quote, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. You see, this is the deeper connection that we are asked to recognize. God dwells within us. And so we must come to, the, to an awareness that there is no time that God is apart from any of us. It is when we begin to acknowledge the presence of God within not only within ourselves, but in others as well, that we will be able to truly follow these words of Jesus. Love one another as I have loved you. There's not a gospel that is chosen, not a lesson that is read on a Sunday morning, that we are not asked to recognize that God is calling us to love as he loves us. If we really want to be true to who we say we are as Christians, we would keep this in the forefront of our minds as we live our lives. Even in the face of difficult people, people who on their best day will get on our last nerve, and we find it hard to love, we must. We must because of who we are. We must, because of who Christ has called us to be. We must, because we know that love brings light to any darkness that we face. 
God is enough. He dwells within us. And so therefore, love abides in us and with us as we walk life's road. Every time someone seeks to do us wrong, we need to pause and remember who we are before we act, before we speak. We need to allow the God presence within us to guide us. There will be times inside and outside of the church where we meet others who are not displaying the same awareness of the God within them as we do. But that does not mean that we are to deny who we are and be like those who are lacking that awareness. The truth is that as much as God dwells within all of us, everyone does not have that awareness. And so God is not allowed to guide them. Love is, ne love is never allowed to light their path. When this is the case, it is not for us to stick our noses up and like the Pharisee in Luke 18, say probably, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. <laughs> this is not what we are to do. Rather, it is for us through our living to help people to recognize that there is something special about us. And there's something special about them as well. Yes. Meeting aggression with peace may not be the first thought that goes through our minds. But we need to set the example. It may not seem to work the first instance or the first few instances for that matter. But we can only help people to change if we show them another way, a better way. It is for us, through our example of godly living, to help them to come to an awareness of the presence of God within them. It is not for us to shake our fingers and run our mouths. It is for us to meet negativity with love. It is for us to allow the God within us to reach out to those who need greatly to be aware of his presence, his love in their lives. We may never, we may never know the, the effect that our meeting hatred or aggression with love will have on someone else, and we don't need to. But bit by bit, they may come to acknowledge that there's something about us, a peace that they want to achieve. They may end up making a transformation in their lives just because we met them with an in love. We may never know this, and it does not matter. We may make the most tremendous impact or we may not may make none at all. But the reality is it does not matter if we know or not. All that matters is that we are following Christ's command. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God is present in all things and at all times. He's present in every one of us. And so no matter what happens, as followers of Christ, respect and care must be shown to every person we meet. And sure, people will say or are saying, it's easier said than done, Father. And of course you are right. It is easier said than done. But difficult or not, if we want to be true to who we say we are, then we need to make the effort. All of us will stumble. We may fall. We will make our mistakes. But we must get right back up. Seek forgiveness. 
we continue on our journey of life in love. Just like a child who has fallen looks up to see loving arms reaching down to lift him out. We must recognize that we are not to look down when we fall, but we are to look up. We must look up to him who reaches down to lift us up, dust us off, and set us back on our way to share his love with everyone. Because as John said, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. So, may we help God to be seen in his world as his love is seen, as his love is experienced, as his love is perfected in and through us. Let us pray. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding. Brotherly and sisterly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there Now, reaffirm our faith. As we say in the words of the Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and not have seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not as in the last one in being with the Father, through whom all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and then became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this thing will not have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. 
you that humanity is made in your image and reflects your truth and your light. We thank you for the life of your servant Anthony, for the love and mercy he received from you and showed on his earthly journey. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departing, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. We ask that in due time we may share with our brother that clearer vision, and we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer our prayers to Christ, the source of our life and strength. Amen. Amen. We offer our prayers through Christ, the source of our life and strength. Let us 
continue to give God thanks. Why not? Let us join with our brothers and sisters who are celebrating this gift of life as they celebrate their birthdays, the wedding anniversary, or any other anniversary or significant moment in their life. And if you are here this morning and you are celebrating, or you celebrated recently but you were not with us, we invite you to come forward at this time as we uplift you in prayer. over your children, O Lord, as their days on this earth increase. We ask you to bless and to guide them wherever they may be. Give them strength when they stand. Comfort them when they are sorrowful or discouraged. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, abide with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, and that we may delight in your will and walk in your will to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. Let us then pursue the things that we make for peace, and live up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
presentation of the offering. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, and this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work, to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and enlightening sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become the channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command. sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray.
God for the people of God. Our souls will peace and be satisfied, and we will sing that songs of praise to Him.
eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all the persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. <laughs> If you come at 6.30 this Thursday, you'll be attending to join the choir for the first time. So, do give that some thought. <laughs> okay, and a word now on sowing seeds for harvest. So, many of us will remember the Valentine's in a Jar initiative that was led by our sister Andrea Bell. The funds raised uh, were donated to assist with the church's annual insurance. And so following on from that thoughtful initiative, some congregants have been encouraging us to invite the church into a, a whole church initiative. And so sowing seeds for harvest was born. On Sunday, the 5th of May, so that is next Sunday, we will be giving interested persons an envelope, and in that envelope there will be $10. This is to be used towards the sowing seeds for harvest activity, their own activity. You are to grow and multiply this amount in preparation for this year's harvest celebration. So you are encouraged to use your imagination and to be creative with your activities. So examples are selling baked goods, uh, if there's a craft that you're good at, hosting a movie or a games night, or any other activity that you deem fit. 
envelopes with all funds received from your activity or activities um, will be are to be returned to the church on or before Harvest Sunday, which is this September the 22nd. So we encourage you to consider taking part in this um, in this reimagined initiative. I would say in which all funds raised will be used to facilitate the various ministries of the church. And a reminder for those who have been participating or those who would like to join our beginners Tai Chi classes for our seniors take place every first and third Sunday and so on. Uh, what did I say? Every first and third <laughs> Thursday. Uh, the next class will be this coming Thursday, the 2nd of May at 10 a.m. at the Intergenerational Hub. So we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, just a notice about the healing conference that is coming up in June that will be taking place in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, the details are projected for those who, and further details will follow next week. Those persons who are interested are invited to text WhatsApp 925 1628 for your invitation letter. No other notices from me. It just remains to wish you a wonderful day and have a peaceful and a blessed week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Alex. There's two brief notes from me. First, is that next week, well, as we I'm sure we know, yes, I'm positive we know, that we have a, uh, an additional by, uh, public holiday this year. And that's next week. So, and that public holidays, the holiday, holiday, sorry, is in observance of emancipation. And so next Sunday, here at St. George's, our service will have a focus on emancipation. I know many we are from various places in the world, and many of us celebrate emancipation or observe emancipation rather on a different day. But we here, as the Church of the Cayman Islands, recognizing where we are, we observe or we we'll be observing what obtains here. And so next Sunday, as I said before, our focus will be emancipation as these islands return to the observance of emancipation um, this year. So as I said, next Sunday, emancipation focus. So if you have, how should I put this? A tire that is suitably colorful, expressive. Some are saying Afro-Caribbean. Some may say ethnic. Please feel free to, to don um, those outfits next week if you feel so inclined. Feel comfortable to do so. Someone mentioned costumes at um, a 7 o'clock service I have to say, you know, yeah. costumes that are going down a risky road. So this next week, a focus on emancipation. Finally, usually, this, I think, this only happens once, and it's on the wedding day. So you get to say on behalf of my wife and I, I get to do it again. On behalf of my wife and I, I wish to extend sincere thanks to all of you for your prayers and well wishes on the birth of our daughter, Mariah. So we are very, very happy, very overjoyed, and we thank you for sharing in, in, in our joy and our experience. Um, there's a famous, for those who are from Barbados, yeah. If you look around, there may be some facial expressions. Um, no, it's too well. There's a famous Comorian, um, a famous Barbadian who, uh, there we go, <laughs> who, made, who made people wait for about wait, is it more than a year? It's almost a year to see um, what um, her latest baby looked like. Was the first one, whichever one. Don't worry, you will not have to wait that long. Um, so we'll get, so we'll get a chance to see little <laughs> Mariah. That's all that is for me. Just heartfelt thanks to all of you. On behalf of Nikita and I, Mommy and Mariah are both doing well.
Oh, that is, that is, um... So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that is doing well. That is on top of the world, even if operating on fumes. But well, thank you very much. We are marching in the light of the world. Christ that is now going in peace to continue to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. A spirit-filled, blessed, love-filled day and week to all. I say I say to you. Thank you. Thank you.